Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, I hope that you are all doing good no. So if nakabalo na mo, nga this January 23 and 28, 23 to 28 rather is your uh, final examination and on February 5 is the submission of grades. So we don't have ample of time now. Wala tayo daghan na time na so we have to double our efforts. That's why I am making this video lecture para uh, self-paced na lang atong learning sa mga sunod pa nga mga lessons. So last meeting, how we discuss about part of speech and just a quick recap now we have eight part of speech. What are those? So in summoning walo ka ka part of speech. First we have the noun, we have the pronoun, we have the verb, the adverb, the adjective, the prepositions, uh, the conjunctions, and the interjections. For today's lecture, I will be discussing to you a very important lesson, of course. And that is uh, Lesson 11, Subject Verb Agreement. So in this lesson, you should be able to explain the different uh, rules in SVA, construct and process with proper uh, use of subject verb agreement. And of course, you should be able to answer the given assessment. For the overview so of this video lecture, I will be discussing the definition of subject verb agreement different rules applied in uh, writing sentence, especially uh, with correct SVA. So being able to find the right subject and verb will help us to correct our errors, more, especially in SVA or subject verb agreements. So what is subject verb agreement? So you keep repeating the word, but well, let me come below the SVA. So SVA or subject verb agreement means that the subject and verb must agree in case and in number. So take note of uh, the model must therefore is an obligation is order the subject obligation verb and the verb must agree with the subject who should be it's a uh, here we use the model must so important siya kaayo so the basic rule is when a singular subject for example we have a she bill car these are all subjects now it should or they should take a singular verb is goes and shines whereas a plural subject takes a plural verb for example she is because she is singular therefore the verb should also be in singular form bill goes that bill go Okay, not unless if the subject is plural. They go by the shaft. But this way, they go. Remember, when the subject is singular, for example, Bill is the name of a person, the subject is sentence. Bill goes, which means Bill go. Then, car is a subject thing. It should be, uh, it should rather be, uh, uh, singular subject also shines. For example, here the list of items is or are on the desk. What is the answer? In this example, the list of items is are on the desk. The correct answer is is. If you know that the list is the subject, then you will choose is for the verb. We are not referring to the items, but we are referring to the list, the list of the items. So Kuan siya, isa lang siya, listahan lang siya. For example, mato ka og market, di ba? So, mag-add lang kag list. Isara imong list, pero inside the list, daghan kay item. So, we are not referring sa item, but we are referring to the list. Therefore, the list is on the desk. Then we have uh, exception, no, exemption rather to the, to the basic rule. First, the first person pronoun, I, takes a plural verb. So, I is a first person pronoun. Maka yung ka nga, Sir, I is singular, but uh, this is an exception, uh, exemption rather no. So I should take or must take rather uh, the plural form of the verb, which is I go, I drive. Even if you argue nga I, isa raman na sir, like ako, I, isa raman ko, nga nung uh, naka plural man siya sir, nga di ba ingon ka nga singular is singular also. But this is the exemption of the first rule. The first person pronoun I should or must take the plural form of the verb. So di kami ngon nga I goes or I drives, but I go and I drive. Then the second exemption is the basic form of the verb is used after certain main verbs such as watch, see, hear, feel, help, let, and make. 
uh, these are the verbs. No, he watched Ronaldo score the winning goal. So the basic form of the verb is used. The basic, so without s. Okay, after main verbs such as watch, see, hear, feel, help, let. So pag double na siya, the second uh, verb, the, 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 the second verb should be the basic form na siya without s. Okay, dili siya scores but score. He watched Ronaldo score the winning goal. Next, let's, uh, uh, let's go to the... First rule no? subject will come for a phrase beginning with of. So this is a key rule for understanding subjects. The word of is the conflict with many, perhaps most subject word errors or mistakes. So that the Malibo so word of. So hasty writers, speakers, readers, and listeners might miss the all too common mistake in following sentence. So if you're not keen, especially if you're a writer, if you're not keen, basically read jokes off. So they call this is an, an example no a bouquet of yellow roses lend color and fragrance to the room. So what makes the sentence erroneous is the use of we're using of, diba right? And a bouquet of yellow roses. And the verb is lend. So it makes the sentence erroneous because we are not referring to the roses, but the bouquet of yellow roses. So that they are taken as one. So the correct should be a bouquet of yellow roses lends, not lend. No, lends color and fragrance to the room. Again, we are not referring to the roses. Okay? We are just referring to the bouquet. So they are just taken as one, as one, therefore lens. Rule number two. Two singular subjects connected by or either or or neither nor neither nor require a singular verb. So my aunt or my uncle is a rapid by train today. So you are Referring to your aunt or your uh, or your uncle, diba? So either of them is arriving by the train today. So you are, I so you should use is instead of are. Then neither one nor Carmen is available. Still, still we are using uh, either either nor. I mean neither nor rather. So therefore the verb should be singular. Then we are using in the third sentence either. So either Kiana or Casey is helping today with stage decorations. So either of them, pili an lang. Therefore, uh, the sentence should have the singular verb. Rule number three: the verb in and or either or or neither nor sentence agrees with the noun or closest to it. So aside from using either or or neither nor, the focus is on the noun or the nearest subject. For example, neither the place nor the serving bowl goes on the shelf. So sir, nga nung goes man siya, sir, nga may plates na pag yung serving bowl, dagan man siya, sir, kaning more than one man siya. Because according to the rule, mag-focus ta sa pinaka-nearest na subject sa verb na to. So, there is a verb na to nga goes. Ang pinaka-nearest na subject is not the plates or not the plates but the serving bowl which is singular. Diba? So, serving bowl goes on the shelf. Alright? So, dito ka sa pinaka-dool. So, if atong balihon class, neither the serving bowl nor the plates... So, the correct verb without S na siya. So, the basic form. So, neither the serving bowl nor the plates go on the shelf. So, na change na siya because we are no longer referring to the serving bowl but the plates na nga pinakadool sa ito ang uh, verb. So, plates go. Alright? So, pag mag-use ganit kag neither nor or either or, take note na magdepende ang verb ni mo sa pinakanyeres na subject. So, bowl goes Plates go. Because plates the gun man, so without S ang verb na to. So this rule can lead to bombs in the road. For example, if I is one of two or more subjects, it could uh, lead to this odd sentence. So kaning kaning a rule number three class, medyo tricky po siya and sometimes awkward po siya. So you have to be careful, uh, especially using using the rule number three. So neither she, my friends, nor I am going to the festival. So, the name of the sentence was awkward, she's published awkward, she's not going to be able to correct her, however, awkward, yeah, so, the name was she really right, right, so, 
when I was in Morgan, I either she, I, or my friends, take note, friends, the Francia, are, so the word word is our gold festival, or they will write them she, she, my friends, and I, and I are not going to the festival. So, nagamit tag R because I is a first person pronoun kaya naka-plural dapat ang iyang verb, di ba? So, exemption ba siya. So, I, again, dapat naka-plural iyang verb. So, medyo tricky siya, no? So, be careful. So, rule number four. As a general rule, you see a plural verb with two or more subjects with they are connected at the end. So if uh, you are using conjunction and and two or more subjects join in conjunction and medically uh, you should use a plural verb. Car and bike are maybe transportation. So you have two choices, diba? It could either be a car or a bike, of which they are the means of your transportation. So you have two choices. Therefore, you're using and. So the verb should be plural or the base form which is R. But note these exemptions again. Breaking and entering is against the law. So, can you breaking and entering, they are taken as one. They siya pwede mabuwag. So, di ka pwede mayingon nga. Breaking and entering are against the law. So, kung yun, sa pagka-construct palang daan sa sentence, sa structure sa sentence, automatically taken as one ni sila. So, breaking and entering is against the law. Dili siya are against the law. Okay. The, uh, the bed and breakfast was charming. So again, the bed and breakfast, they are not two entities, they are not two subjects, but they are taken as one. Therefore, singular siya in form, then the subject should also be singular. So in those sentences, breaking and entering and bed and breakfast are compound nouns. Therefore, they are taken as one, then the verb should be singular. All right? So I hope that is clear. So note, some uh, think it is incorrect to place a personal pronoun first in a multi-subject sentence. So I, my dad, and my stepmom are going to the movies. She and Orville bought a dog. So while not grammatically incorrect per se, it is a courtesy to place the pronoun last year, except when awkward to do so as shown under the rule 3. So... I think ani gani class no if you have a multi subject sentence um courtesy na gyud na siya nga to place the pronoun last so ipa last na gyud tong pronoun nga for example the first person pronoun nga i ipa last gyud siya however balik pa sa rule number 3 if awkward gani ang sentence uh, try rewriting the sentence okay although grammatically grammatically correct siya pero awkward siya so rewrite Pero in nature good, by courtesy, dapat ang personal pronoun or ang pronoun, hindi awahig yun na siya sa multi-subject na sentence. Again, if multi-subject ang sentence, it means dagan kay subject, dapat awahig si I. Pero if awkward ganding nga awahig si I, i-rewrite ni mo ang sentence. Okay? Rule number four. As a general rule, use a plural verb with two or more subjects when they are connected by an. Again, as a general rule, use a plural verb with two or more subjects when they are connected by an. Hi. For a while, sorry about that. All right. So, rule number five. Sorry about that. Sometimes the subject is separated from the verb. Message words as long as, um, as well as, along with, together with, besides, and the like. Okay, so these words and phrases are not part of the subject. So, can they say along with, so together with, as, well as besides, delete na sila part sa subject. They are just intervening words or makapalibog sa imuha. Ignore them and use a singular verb when the subject is singular. Okay? So, mga pasikat, rinin sila. Dili sila apilon. For example, the politician, so again, the politician, along with the newsman, is expected shortly. Why we are using is a singular verb because we are just focusing on the politician singular and not with a newsman because we are using along with. So, walay labot si along with a newsman. Again, second example, excitement 
uh, as well as nervousness is the cause of her shaking. So we are not focusing on the nervousness, but we're just focusing on the excitement. The excite ka, di ba? Excitement. Tulay labot si, as well as nervousness. Therefore, we are not using R but is in this sentence. Rule 5B, parentheses are not part of the subject. So if naga ni a phrase na nakabutang sa parentheses, they are not part of the subject, ha? So Joe and his trusty uh, mutt was always welcome. So we're using was because we're just referring to Joe because uh, the phrase inside the parentheses is not included. So if it seems awkward, try rewriting the sentence. So if awkward, can I class you how to uh, you have the quantity of the option to be writing in accordance with your writing. Rule number six. It says beginning with either or there, a uh, true subject follows the verb. There are four hurdles to jump. Okay, so here we are, we are referring to hurdles. Right, so the sentence uh, begins with there, but we are focusing on the hurdles. Therefore, we are using the subject are, uh, the verb are rather. The second sentence we are still using there. So the sentence begins with there. It is a high hurdle. So we are just referring to the hurdle, not the hurdles. So hurdle is singular. Then we should use the singular form of verb is. Then for the second for the second uh, example, the sentence begins with here, and uh, the subject, uh, the main subject is uh, uh, the main subject rather are the keys. Therefore, we are using are not is. Okay. So again, there, here. Uh, the when the sentence begins with here or there, then the subject follows the verb. Note, uh, the word there is or there is, is a constru uh, construction of there is. So le uh, it leads to bad habits in informal sentences, like there is a lot of people here today, because it's easier to say there uh, there's than there are. Take care never to use there's with a plural subject. So, na ay mga writers class no nga ganahan sila og short then so na tay gitawag nga contractions like tanang your you are there there is okay so dapat be specific ka ana nga dili ka malibog ba kung unsay pasabot sa uh, there is if was ba or where ba or is ba so imo na lang siya spell out mas maayo siya nga spell out ni Rule number seven, use a singular word with distances, uh, periods, time, sums of money, etc. when considered as a unit. So singular word, uh, when we are referring to distance, period, time, sums of money, especially when they are considered as a unit, they can swan, for example. Three miles is too far to walk. So uh, three miles is a uh, distance, diba? Example of a distance. So we are using is instead of are, even if may kaha, miles daghan man siya, sir. But uh, three miles is a uh, unit. Therefore, we should take the singular verb. Five years is the maximum sentence for the offense. So it's taking, uh, the five years here is taken as a unit and it is a period of time. Therefore, we should use singular verb. And ten dollars is a high price to pay. So ten dollars is a single unit. Therefore, the this sentence should use the singular verb is. But ten dollars example, if you are referring to a dollar bill, not a unit, then you should use the plural form. So ten dollars were scattered scattered on the floor. So naghay ten dollars sa floor. So plural siya. Were scattered. Were is past tense of R. <laughs> Rule 8A. Uh, with words that indicate portions, example, a lot, a majority, a sum, all. Rule 1, given earlier, if you can still remember now, in this section is reversed. And we are guided by the noun after of. If the noun after of is singular, use a singular verb. If it is, if the noun after of is plural, then use plural verb. For example, a lot of 
uh, the pie has disappeared. So a lot of the pies have disappeared. So even if we are using of, but we should focus on the main subject. In the first sentence, we are just referring to a lot of the pie. So pie, singular, so has disappeared. The second example, a lot of the pies, so plural na nimo siya, therefore, mo follow po ang verb have disappeared. 5% of the pie has disappeared. 5% of the pies have disappeared. A third of the city is unemployed. A third of the people, of which is already plural, are unemployed na. Dili na is. All of the pie is gone. All of the pies are gone. So some of the pie is missing. Or some of the pies are missing. Again, we are not referring to the of, but sa main subject. So, magdepende ang verb sa main subject. If it is singular, then singular has. If it is plural, then plural have. When collecting nouns, as a group, we have a jury, family, audience, relations. So, these are all examples of collecting nouns. The verb might be singular or So again, sorry for that. If you are using a collective noun, nasa imo ha ang prerogative. If on sa intention ni mo, if plural ba siya or singular ba siya, so ikaw lang maka-justify, Anna. No, you know what? And the one other who uses a plural verb who are able to take now, stay here to be accurate. So, for example, gusto mo ito lang ha, decide ang your intention is uh, a plural ang family or ang jury kaya plural siya, then you should be accurate and consistent. So, throughout the operating, dapat consistent ka nga ang producer or referee mo, ano yung mga collective nouns is plural. Throughout the operating, plural yun, actually, pwede nga singular ka, plural, or inconsistent ka. Um, so you should be accurate system. So depending man siya noon sa ibang ranking or sa intent, pero take note na hindi siya isang condition, consistent na ka. It must not be done carelessly. The following is the sort of flawed sentence one sees and hears a lot these days. So kani class mo na siya ang mga flawed or dili consistent ng mga sentences referring to the collective nouns no the staff is deciding how they want to vote so the staff is staff is collective diba and is is singular so careful speakers and writers would avoid assigning the singular is and the plural they to staff if uh, in the same sentence so kani class is naglibog na siya kay nagstaff gani ka so is so, butang talang ang staff kay ang intention ni mo kay taken as one. So, unit siya. So, singular ni mo siya is. Kung nga nung niabot nga po kag they, na plural man na siya. So, inconsistent. Okay? So, you should be careful. So, here is the consistent use of uh, the collective uh a collective uh, noun staff, no? The staff are deciding how they want to vote. So, kung nagamit kag they, it changed na lang tong is o are para consistent ka. So, rewriting such sentences is recommended whenever possible. So, the preceding sentence would read even better as the staff members are deciding how they want to be, how they want to vote. So, pwede po ka specific. So, from staff, game mo siyang staff members, therefore plural na siya. So, you use are and you use they. They are all 
consistent. Rule number nine, nor were at least as was instances that express in which or are contrary to. So, really, siya ang may arguments. If may mga ka nga, if you were here, you'd be sorry. Sir, nga nung were man ta nga, Joe is singular, dapat if Joe was here, you'd be sorry. Again, this is um the the author now expresses a wish, or the, if this is a contrary to fact, then dapat ang word na was it changed were. So in this sentence, this is uh the author uh expresses a wish na if Joe were here, you'd be sorry. So even if Joe is singular, then you should use were. Okay, this is rule number nine. Okay. Now here, oh, shouldn't Joe be followed by was, not where, given that Joe is singular? So that's a question, diba? Right? But Joe isn't actually here, so we say were, not was. The sentence demonstrates the subjunctive mood. So sir, what is a subjunctive mood? It is used to express a hypothetical, wishful, imaginary, or factually contradictory thought. So the subjunctive mood pairs with singular subjects with what we usually think of a plural verb. So I wish it were Friday. So nag-wish man ka, even if Friday is singular, di kami ngon nga, I wish it was Friday. I wish it were Friday. She requested that he raise his hands or the foreman demanded that Joe were safety gagos. In the first example, no, a wishful statement that a fact is being expressed, therefore, where which we usually think of is a plural verb, is used with a singular hint. So, normally, he raised what sounds terrible to us, the back, okay, he raises the fact. However, in the second example, when a request is being expressed, the subjunctive is correct. So, subjunctive mood is using the word in English, but should not or should be still used in formal speech and writing. So, still, if you are very keen, then follow these rules. Is that it? Yes, it. So, that was the past super agreement. So, I hope that you have very few questions. So, you don't hesitate to use the uh, Chats. And then, like, what is the popular efforts by on January 20th, it will be using the exam. And on February 5th, it will be the submission phase. For the next class, we will be discussing more about the verbs. That's it for today's class. I hope you have a lot. See you next meeting. And thank you so much.